University, and I'm very pleased to um, present our keynote speaker, Reverend Selena Fox, fresh from Wisconsin, from Circle Sanctuary, who's going to talk about King University and also some very hot topics to do with uh, religious freedom that you'll, I'm sure, be very interested and excited to hear about. With our legacy as a people, not just now, but thinking of ourselves as continuity from the past. So many of those old pagan cultures, now gone, are actually living on because those emblems, those images of various deity forms, sacred animals, sacred plants, whatever, are on altars today. Those old names are being chanted and invoked. So we have that continuity with the old pagan past, which is part of the reason I prefer to use the pagan with a big P as the big umbrella term, because it includes that ancient past as well as our present. But I think when we look about that great salad model where we're all together and connecting, we also have to do some time traveling into the future, because we are the ancestors of pagans to come. So, I don't know if you ever thought about yourself being an ancestor, but you are, because if you think about all time is happening now and do all of that kind of new physics thing, there's actually already future generations in that future um, dimension somewhere. And what we're doing right here today is making pagan history. We're doing updates every few days about the ongoing, what I call, the quest for the pinnacle for veterans. That can be added to the National Cemetery Administration's list of emblems of belief that can be included on government-issued headstones, markers, and plaques for deceased veterans. Big mouthful, but essentially, there are 38 religious symbols that the VA has that can be on the plaques and markers and headstones for veterans after they die. And every veteran, everybody that's ever served in the U.S. Armed Forces, when they die, they can get one of these things at taxpayer expense, right? Pentecost, not on the list yet. 1997, the quest began. The in Tabernacle Church put in their, their letter. Over the years, over nine years, nine different groups. Carilion nativist tradition got theirs in last year. Circle Sanctuary joined the fray last year. We put our request in. Then they changed the rules on us in October. Well, they said, okay, now you need to have a dead pagan, essentially, before you can get a pagan emblem put on the list, okay? Well, no. oh, well, we don't. <laughs> they changed the rules beginning of October, informed us beginning of November. Um, we did an honoring at um, Veterans Day, 11th of November, and as part of that email that went out, we just said, well, we're available to help anyone that might want this option. And then on the 17th of November, somebody connected with us for a very long time. If you get one of those sample issues of the magazine, you'll figure out who it is. Um, uh, basically died, and his widow the following month decided to order a marker. She knew in ordering the marker, it'd be a test case. So, so at the beginning of January, January 6th, Epiphany, you know, the time where I see kind of that pagan Christian interface came together. Well, um, we completed the application, sent it to the VA, and then ATC added more stuff to their application, and then we had other groups joining us, and yes, there's a whole variety of people in this quest. So now the VA is having the opportunity to do the right thing. And what I think is really a fabulous thing is so many pagan individuals, small groups, and large groups are all coming together. They're doing magical workings together, they're networking together, and yes, even when there have been witch wars, pagan wars, conflicts, people are, are bridging those gaps to work on this issue. Because I think that awareness of we as a people truly need our equal rights is front and center. So I'd like to close my remarks, we still have a little bit of time to talk, with, um, inviting us all, if you wish, to invoke the name of an ancient Roman goddess, known properly today in America's Lady Liberty, 
by your ancient pagan name, Libertas. So if you want to join with me in chanting Libertas three times, let us bring <coughs> her energy not only to this particular working, this quest, but to our people that we truly can be free and have equal rights. Are we ready? Ah. Libertas! 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 Be with us and give us that pinnacle right now. <laughs> we see her as a multicultural goddess because various forms of liberty have been around the world. If you turn back the time, 1989, 1990, with the uprising in communist China and the students that went into the streets, and what did they do? What icon for democracy did they raise? Libertas. They called her the goddess of democracy. Uh, Ah, oh, she's truly gone multicultural now. <laughs> she's over in China, and, uh, and she's actually everywhere. So the Lady Liberty League actually got its start in 1985 when I and other people connected with Circle Sanctuary did our first very visible national pagan religious freedom work. And we're working on a cemetery. And we have, we've had our cemetery project for about 10 years. We have remains from a number of pagans from different parts of the country and different traditions that have had an association with Circle. Usually the larger Circle network, although there are some people from within our community, our events community, that also have the remains there. And in order to have the option of burying, doing green burials, i.e. in shrouds and um, without a lot of chemicals and that type of thing, we are going through the next step of cemetery creation and also be able to put all sorts of markers and other things up. And so we've had a surveyor out every month for the last several months. We're going through a local zoning plan commission process and we're going to go to the town board and we're going to the county board. And, and yeah, it's a long and bob process, but we're really working to have the first National Pagan Cemetery in America. So part of what we're looking at doing is having the sacred land be a place that not only is a source of pagan history and a resource center, but also a place where people can honor the pagan dead. And we hope to have some markers with pentacles on them or <laughs> vets issued by the government up at Circle Cemetery in the near future. So we're, we're working to get that, if you were at the earlier talk, um, we're working to get that piece accomplished so that these markers can get produced. And where will those markers go? Some of those markers are going to go to Circle. I heard about podcasting earlier today, <laughs> so I imagine that will be added to the list of things that we do. In terms of our staff, we have a little bit of money that we have for our office staff. And, um, but we also have volunteers in our office staff. And, and so that's something that we don't talk about a whole lot, but I'm mentioning it here because it's part of the story. And I really do think there is a place within the larger realm of paganism to have institutions and to have staff. We spend a lot of a lot of money on trying to work for the greater good for all of paganism, and, and a lot of people don't see that. And we aren't one to really go toot our horn a lot about it. But I figured, well, it's the end of the day. I tell you, you know, the true tales uh, from what it's like to run a pagan church within a pagan culture that hasn't yet embrace tithing. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to put other pagans, you know, down and whatever, but there are some issues around the whole money thing, and I think some people have had some close encounters of a bad kind regarding the religion of origin, and have really seen the whole money religion thing as really problematic, and I don't want anything structural, I don't want people telling me what to do, and, and there's such a bad reaction to it that it kind of moves it all into the other space. Well, we shouldn't have to pay for anything. And, you know, I can't borrow a tarot reading for our postage, you know, with the local postmaster, you know. I, you know, we have some very real expenses. So are, you, are you like a, an actual church or yeah. a not-for-profit? Yeah, 501c3. Uh, we were actually one of the first Wiccan churches with a pagan, you know, worldwide pagan ministry to get federal tax-exempt status. 
and we were founded in 74, and then we got the IRS status in 1980. And um, we've continued to interface with the federal government on all manner of things. So Army Chaplain's Handbook revision in the early 80s, uh, consulted with Bureau of Prisons, uh, U.S. Department of Justice on their technical reference manual. Um, yeah, we we're pretty we got a postage nonprofit postage permit from the U.S. Postal Service that churches get, and so we're fully legally recognized as a church. And one of the first um, of the pagan groups to actually have it on all the branches of government. So we not only have it at federal level, and we're incorporated that way in the state, but at the local level, we actually have church zoning. 